Hi everybody, in this video I want to go over how to find the induced current direction in Faraday's law type problems two different ways. First, by using the sign conventions in Faraday's law itself, and second, by using Lenz's law. Lenz's law, remember, states that the induced voltage and current uh, produced by a changing flux must oppose in some sense the change in flux that produced the current in the first place. All right, so let's go over this in the two examples. Imagine I've got a loop of uh, wire, a circular loop kind of oriented this way. And I've got the magnetic field passing through it. All right, so there's the back of the loop, there's the front of the loop. And I've got the magnetic field going through that way. Let's imagine that this magnetic field, although it's to the right, is getting weaker and weaker to the right. All right, so let's use Faraday's law sign conventions first to try and figure out the direction of the induced current. All right, so I could set the induced voltage equal to the product of the current uh, passing through this loop multiplied by a res resistance, and Faraday's law says that induced voltage must be the negative of the rate of, mag rate of change of magnetic flux uh, passing through that loop with respect to time. Okay, so I'm going to pick myself an area vector, which I've picked to the right. So, the flux itself is the dot product of the magnetic field vector and the area vector. Those are in the same direction. All right, so what's happening uh, is the magnetic field is decreasing. I'll have a B dot DA initially, and then as the magnetic field strength gets weaker, a B dot DA will get less and less and less. So, D phi DT, or D phi DT, the rate of change of flux is negative. All right, so this here is a negative. But I've got a negative times a negative. That's going to give me overall a positive. Resistance is a positive quantity, so the current must be positive. Now, we need to figure out what positive means in this context. All right, remember, uh, positive and negative for the current is associated with the path direction. So. Once we pick our area vector, we've associated a positive direct, uh, path direction. Stick my thumb of my right hand in the direction of the current. Fingers wrap around in the sense of the positive path. So with this choice of area vector, the positive path direction is down in the front and up in the back. We've deduced through this careful consideration of signs that the current must be positive. Therefore, we deduce that the current is going down in the front and up in the back. All right, now let's do this using Lenz's law. Lenz's law, we wanna figure out first the change in flux, whether it's to the right through the loop or to the left through the loop. And then we, the current must be such that it produces a counter flux that opposes the original, original change in flux. So let's see how that works out. All right, so I've got a magnetic field to the right through the loop. That means I've got a magnetic flux to the right through the loop. But the magnetic field is getting weaker. So I had a flux to, through the loop to the right. And in the end, I have a flux through the loop to the right. But there's less. You know, Stronger magnetic field initially means more flux. Uh, so I have a flux to the right, but it's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. So I've got less and less and less flux to the right. So the change in flux is to the left. That means the induced current, whatever it is, must produce a counterflux to the right. So let's figure out what direction the current must be in to produce a, right, uh, a rightward flux. Remember, there's lots of different things you can do. You can stick your fingers in the direction of the current, and your thumb will point in the direction of the magnetic field at the center of the loop, which will be then be uh, the direction of the flux. All right, so let's imagine that the current went up in the front. If it went up in the front, I'd curl my fingers this way, and that would be producing a magnetic field to the left through the loop. So that was not the direction we want. We need a counterflux to the right. If the current was going up in the front and down in the back, that would produce a self flux to the left. So that's not going to work. So we must conclude then uh, it must be going the other way. Fingers coming down in the front, up in the back. That gives a magnetic field produced by the current itself to the right. That means the counterflux produced by this induced current is to the right, and that's the direction we want. So it works out. Okay, so let's do another example. In this case, I've got a square loop in the plane of the board. Uh, I have a magnetic field coming out of the board, and let's assume the magnetic field is decreasing. So first, let's do a Faraday's law sign convention analysis for this. Okay, so 
I've got, I need to find my, uh, my rate of change of my magnetic flux. Flux itself, remember, is B dot A, assuming I've got a uniform magnetic field. All right, so my magnetic field is coming out of the page. My area vector is coming out of the page. Uh, that dot product is going to be positive. All right, so I've got a positive flux. But my magnetic field is decreasing. So I have a positive flux initially, but then I'm going to have a less positive flux later. Just it's still positive, but it's but this magnetic field is decreasing. Okay, so I have an initially strong positive flux, later a weaker positive flux. Flux is becoming less positive. Uh, that means the change in flux is negative. So I'm going to have a negative times a negative. That's going to give me a positive. The resistance is positive, so that means the current has to be positive to have the left-hand side and the right-hand side in agreement. So I'm just going to put a little arrow there, positive current. Now we have to figure out what a positive means in terms of our uh, sign conventions. If I've chosen my area vector to be out, then the positive direction around the path associated with that area vector is, uh, it, well, it's prescribed by the right-hand rule. Thumb in the direction of the area vector, fingers wrap around in the direction of the positive sense around the loop. So this is the positive path around the loop. My current is positive, so that must be the direction the current goes. I uh, induced. Okay, now let's do the Lenz's Law analysis. With the Lenz's Law, our concern is whether the flux, the change in flux is out through the loop or into the loop. Okay, so we have a magnetic field coming out of the loop. So the flux is out, but the magnetic field is decreasing. So I start with outward flux, but then I end up with less outward flux. So the change in flux is in. The original change in flux is into the board, in. So the counter flux produced by the induced current must be out. So the question is, what direction of current do we have to have to produce an outward flux, which means a current must produce a magnetic field through the center of the loop that's out? Well, let's check. I mean, if the current were this way, we could use our right hand rule for current, either stick your fingers in the direction of the current, thumb would point in the direction of the magnetic field produced by that current. If the current were going that way, the counter flux would be in, that's not gonna help. Uh, so the current has to be going this way. Uh, fingers in the direction of the current, thumb would point in the direction of the magnetic field uh, that the current produces at the center of the loop, and that's out. That means an outward flux, so this works. If you want to check it the other way, if you don't like that right-hand rule for current, you can check it this way. Thumb in the direction of the hypothetical current that's induced, fingers wrap around, uh, that produces a magnetic field that's out of the board in the interior of the loop, hence a flux outward, which is what we need for the counterflux. All right, so that's two different ways to get directions of induced currents. Uh, one way is directly from sign conventions, carefully applied to Faraday's law of induction. Uh, the second way is through this Lenz's law principle that the uh, induced voltage and induced current produced by a changing flux uh, must produce a counterflux that opposes the original flux that produced them in the first place. All right, thanks for watching.